Well, as we said at the beginning of the program, will you be controlled by fear and blind obedience to authority, or will you act out of self-preservation? Will you think for yourself? And of course, we had the famous experiment from the 60s, the Milgram experiment, where people on the orders of someone in authority shocked someone to the point that they were severely injured or perhaps died. And we saw this reenacted on French television about five years ago. With 80 out of 96 people in front of a television audience, what they thought they were doing was shocking someone to death. We've also seen it in real life. We saw people run back into the Twin Towers when they could have escaped or sitting in their chair because someone told them to go back in. Someone told them not to leave. And most recently, we saw it in the D.C. subway. Well, joining us to talk about this is Gerald Salenti of TrendsResearch.com. Now, he contacted Rob Dew after he saw Rob's report about this fire on the D.C. metro. People told to just sit in place as the subway trains were filling with smoke. Amazingly, they did, many of them. One woman died, 84 went to the hospital. And of course, we've seen this before, 9-11, people who could have gotten out of the second tower and they were told to stay in place. Many of them obediently did. Some of them got out and were told to go back, and they went back. Now, Gerald had an experience with this in Chile. Welcome, Gerald. Uh, tell us about your experience in Chile. Well, it was back in 2010, and I was on the uh, 14th floor of the Crown Plaza Hotel, along with one of the, my colleagues, and 3.30 in the morning, things started shaking. And it was the worst earthquake they had over there in 100 years. So immediately, you know, I was out of there, you know, I just grabbed my, my, my pants and <laughs> heading down the stairs. And then the thing went off in 90 seconds. But to make a very long story short, when we got down there, this is a hotel probably holds about 200 people, 250 people. There were only about several people down. We had to exit another way after we got to the third floor. Everything was collapsed underneath it. And... Most people stayed in their rooms. Mm -hmm. And the place didn't come down because it was one of these earthquake resistant buildings. So the thing was all twisted, but you know, it didn't collapse. And as people started coming in, you know, four in the morning, five in the morning, and I kept asking them, you know, what, what did you do? Well, these were the stories. I called the front desk. <laughs> uh, we were waiting, we called our tour operator. <laughs> We went into the bathtub. I think that was a different movie. You're supposed to go in the bathtub. <laughs> and we stayed under the, under the door. Oh, there yeah. You, <laughs> you know, a 20-story a, a building comes smashing down. You stand under that door. You're going to be okay. What it, the, the moral of the story was that everybody froze. Yeah. Yeah. And, I saw a quote from you. You said, think for yourself. Nobody can think for themselves anymore. They, they, tr they, they trust authority, but they can't even think for themselves. They were afraid. Yeah. And because what's happened is that's all they sell us is fear. And, but don't worry about it. We're going to watch you and we're going to take care of you. We'll be in charge. Oh, you have nothing to worry about. So that's the mentality that people have in their minds. They've lost the courage to think for themselves, to be themselves. They lack the dignity and self-respect. And so they put their lives in the hands of others. And you see it all the time. It's going on right in front of us now. You're seeing what's going on over there in Europe. People are buying the baloney, saluting the leaders, and following the script. Yeah, a lot of this is just a, a blind reliance on authority. And of course, that's the way much of this stuff is being sold to us. Look at climate change. That's essentially an appeal to authority. When you ask people, why do you believe uh, that we've got global warming going on? They'll basically cite some authorities who told them that it was happening. They can't look for themselves. They won't look at the data themselves. They won't step outside their room and look at the weather. And of course, if they bother to look at these models that they're using to project uh, global warming, they'll see that for the little bit that we can look at, of course, these are such long-term models, you can't verify most of it. But the little bit that we can verify, we see their models are broken, they're not working, yet people will still buy that reliance on authority. We saw it with the Milgram experiments back in the 1960s. When the authorities told them to uh, shock people, even to the point of death, they would do it unquestioningly. Yeah, so when Rob did that piece and how the people obediently behaved, it's even worse now. Think yeah. of how kids are growing up going to school. You know, they, they, they're going to little prisons. 
Oh, you absolutely. got cops in school. You can't make this stuff up. Mm -hmm. Look, if I grew up now, if I was a little kid now, they'd have had me whacked out on Ritalin a long time ago. <laughs> I'm serious. That's right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is the whole culture now is so fearful. Every day is another day of fear. Think I'm making it up? Watch out. There's a guy up there in Ohio that was going to attack Washington, D.C. And I tell you, he was going to destroy the whole place single-handedly. Good thing we got him. We're on the case. Yeah. Look, yeah. you watch what happens with the Super Bowl coming up. Mm -hmm. All we're okay. going to hear about is the no-fly zones, all of these guys out there. With it. Here comes a... You know, they got all this all of it. Oh, yeah, here comes a terrorist. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, it's a 12-year-old kid. What I'm saying is you're seeing it in France now. Yeah. You're seeing it all over the world. They got tens of thousands of stormtroopers out there. All they're doing is putting fear into the people so they obey. Absolutely. They can't sell anything without using fear. And, of course, they're pushing the new agenda to try to control the Internet. CISPA is coming back yet again. And, of course, it's the fear that somebody is going to hack into your computer when the government's doing it all the time. 24-7, <laughs> 365, the government is hacking your computer, your phone, everything, and yet we're supposed to turn over all of our freedom to them because somebody might look at our emails. Yeah. Somebody is looking at our emails, aren't they, Gerald? Well, of course. Well, you know, now, by the way, that, you know, Obama came out and he made that, um, that North Korean hacking, that American business Sony. I thought they were Japanese, but they say they're an American <laughs> business. And, and they made a big deal out of that one. And, of course, in the, you know, the wired world, everybody said that, you know, it was an inside job and mm -hmm. North Korea didn't do it. But they made it a freedom of speech issue. Mm -hmm. What's going on over there in, in uh, Europe they're making it a freedom of speech issue. So now we are all, and people say to me, uh, Mr. Salenti, aren't you concerned about the government? You know, you say something. I said, no, I don't have to worry anymore. Obama said that it's a free speech issue. So now it's okay for me to say that the president of the United States is a fraud and a disgrace to this country, and so too is Congress. I don't have anything to worry about anymore. I could say it. So yeah, I just want to make that clear. So if anything happens to me, I doubt it, because the president said he's in favor of free speech. So my speech is he's a disgrace, and so is Congress, that these are the people that are leading this country down. And what's going on around the world, by the way, put it all together. This has nothing to do with a couple of crazy guys killing 17 people or, or, or 20 people in France. It has nothing to do with the one guy in Ohio that was going to take over Washington. What they're doing now is they're setting us up for the takedown because the global markets are coming down. They're out of control. I'm seeing swings that I've never seen in my life before. The Dow is up 300, down 200. The oil is up 4%, down 5%, day after day. Mm -hmm. You see what's going on over there with, with the Swiss franc now. You know, they're no longer pegged to the euro because they know that Draghi over there is going to pull his QE stunt that everybody knows isn't going to work, that's devaluing the euro. What they're doing is it's in place the economies are collapsing, and now they have the people in height of fear. So when this thing goes down and people start taking to the streets, they don't have a chance. Look what's going on in Spain. The Podemos party, out of nowhere, they could win the election today. You look what's going on in Italy between the Five Star Movement and the uh, Northern uh, League. You look what's going on in every country in Europe, whether it's Germany, all of these UKIP in, in, in the UK, one party after another, they've had it. 
And now the people are ready to go to the streets as this economy is going to collapse. The euro is on its way out. It's getting slaughtered. And now they have the stormtroopers in place to keep you in your place. Absolutely. When you look at what happened with, you mentioned uh, gold and volatility, that went up, uh, or the Swiss franc went up 30% in 13 minutes. And of course, gold has been shooting up today as a, con as a uh, commodity as well. But 30% in just 13 minutes. And you're talking about how they saw the quantitative easing for the euro coming, and they no longer can hold the line and hold the value down of the Swiss franc. They just can't afford to do it. That's a 30% jump in just 13 minutes. Yeah, the Swiss know what's going to happen. You know, when they, when they start this, this, this quantitative easing, quantitative easing, buying government bonds and corporate crap, that's all it is. And it's not going to work. Financial Times did a poll about two weeks ago on this. The, the vast majority of the economists said it's not going to work. All it's going to do is devalue the currency. That's why you're seeing gold go up. And again, the only reason the dollar has any strength is because of all these world currencies are so cheap. Look at the price of copper. It's not only oil. Copper is at five and a half year lows. There's no demand. There's excess supply. I'm not making this number up. 85 people, 85 people have more dough than half the world's population, 3.5 billion. You look what's going on in Brazil with Petrobras, their energy company, not only caught in corruption, bam, down on a downhill slide. Look what's coming on here in the States. Look at the bank profits. Hey, guess what? 20% or thereabouts of the junk bonds in this country, energy related. Yeah, one after another. They, they're in the mergers and acquisitions of the energy. They're in the deals, they're in the drilling, they're in housing. The banks have been, this is another Ponzi scheme ready to collapse. That's what you're seeing going on in the markets. It's out of control. They may be stupid, but they are very shrewd, the ones in charge. They know this thing is coming down. And what you're seeing going on about in Europe, about you know these Islamic you know, guys that are going to take over the world, all this is is a setup to keep us in check. Because when they, people start hitting the streets, they're going to blow them out. We're almost out of time, Gerald, but I wanted to get your take. Uh, you were talking about how they're using free speech to sell this. But, of course, when they had their unity march, they excluded the political party that had just won the European elections a few months ago. That was Le Pen's party. And uh, that seems to be what they're afraid of. It looks like the people in Europe across the board, whether it's UKIP in England or whether it's Le Pen in uh, France, they understand that they don't want to be a part of the EU anymore. And of course, Iceland just dropped their membership application. The new government there said they are no longer going to continue talks uh, to join the EU. So they don't want to get in. The people who are in it want to get out. Uh, what do you see happening in Europe in the short term? Oh, it's going to be chaos. There's no way of bailing them out anymore. They've stolen the people's money under the name of austerity measures which is white shoe boy language for, for give, taxing you more as you're earning next to nothing. It means taking away your benefits and your any kind of social services and then raising your retirement age till after you die. So they don't have any more games to play. You're looking at the unraveling. I'm making this very clear, is that what they're doing with this whole thing about, you know, the Islamic fundamentalists taking over the country is really a drill mm -hmm. to really put the people in their place because the soldiers are out on the streets and the police are armed to the teeth. They are not going to tolerate any dissent. Look at this guy, Halan. What was his popularity rating? 15%? I can now say that the French are as dumb as the Americans. They <laughs> had their imbecile in chief that's selling them the war on terror, and we had our imbecile in chief over here, Bush, selling us on our war on terror. And anybody that wants to get into a good business, I suggest you consider propaganda. 
You could do it cheaply, stupidly, and get great results. Uh, they're stepping it up, aren't they? It's going to be interesting to see what happens in Europe. It's going to be interesting to see if the people can wake up and take control of their government or if it's already too late. Uh, thank you for joining us, Gerald. Uh, it's trendsresearch.com, and uh, you can get a subscription there to Trends Journal. You've got your 2015 forecast up there now. Yes, we do. We have also our conference is available, too. It's a five-and-a-half-hour conference with all the trends of the year to come. Great. Now is the time to uh, take a look at that because there are some amazing trends, as you pointed out. Commodities are crashing. And I think really the thing that's driving this whole collapse in oil prices that people aren't talking about is just how weak the global economy is. So it looks like a, a, a serious year this year, not only deflation, but perhaps even depression. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Gerald Salenti.